Okay, today we're going to talk about how to wax your surfboard, and uh, we're going to break this down in a few different steps. We're going to start off by talking about how to choose the best wax, the types of wax combs, the process of removing old wax from your surfboard, and then basically how to apply your wax to your surfboard. So I'm going to pull my board out of the bag and uh, get it ready so I can begin the process. Sometimes it's a good idea to put your surfboard in the sun and let the wax get a little soft. It might be easier to take off, a little bit less muscle and a little faster process. Um, you may not want to let it sit too long in the sun as it could turn to liquid and be kind of uh, real hard to, to work with and keep clean in your area. So uh, you just want a little bit of sun, uh, enough to make it, to soften it up. And then from there you can begin the process. And, and so there's a couple different kind of wax combs can use. There's not a whole lot of variation in wax combs. There are a couple different features that you might find and one of those would be a wax comb that has more of an ergonomic uh, handle to it which might make it easier for the removal process. At the same time I, I usually prefer a wax comb that has longer teeth which makes it easier to go ahead and grind up and grate the existing wax that you may have on your surfboard. And as you're removing the wax, it's a good idea to consolidate the wax to keep your area clean and make it easy to dispose of. So a lot of times I'll get out a paper towel or, uh, or some recycled plastic or paper that's around and I'll go ahead and make a ball of wax out of the old wax that I'm going to discard. And when you're going to put wax on your surfboard, one thing to keep in mind is choosing a wax that is good. There's a lot of surfboard wax on the market these days and uh, some of it works and some of it doesn't really work so well. So uh, you want to pick a wax that is sticky. Uh, if your wax is put on and it makes, uh, you know, and, and it covers your board but yet uh, doesn't have much of a stick factor to it or possibly loses its stickiness factor with one or two sessions, then it's probably not the wax for you. Today I'm going to use some sticky bumps. Sticky Bumps is manufactured by Wax Research Inc. Uh, Sticky Bumps is not one of our sponsors, so we're not getting paid to uh, give you this information. I'm just providing you with uh, what I actually use when I'm out there surfing. So Sticky Bumps is a good good one to use. There's, a, there's other good ones as well, but uh, Sticky Bumps hasn't let me down yet. It's also important to choose a wax that's categorized with the right temperature range for the areas that you're going to be surfing in. So if you're in a tropical region, of course, you'd be using a, a tropical wax and that's going to have a stickiness factor or a factor of not melting as easily in warmer weather. In Southern California here, it's pretty much cold and cool. So in this case, I'm using a cool wax. Cool wax uh, is a good one in Southern California. It'll actually work in a couple different uh, conditions and, and might not fall apart when it's too warm and it might uh, still work when it's cold. So uh, I tend to use a lot of cool wax. Uh, in many of the different seasons. And there's a little bit of marketing factor with wax. A lot of times it comes in a different scent. So right now I'm working with some bubble gum. That always gets your senses going. When preparing to apply new wax to your surfboard, you want to draw out the best coverage area for your stance and your surfboard. And as a general rule, I'd probably say it's uh, safer to overestimate the coverage area. The last thing you want to do is be out there catching the perfect wave and all of a sudden your foot's in a little bit different position and you slip and, and fall and, and are unable to recover. So it's hard to lose when you go with a little extra wax on your board and can also help you avoid injury. Uh, slipping on your surfboard uh, can, is a common cause for pulling muscles and injuring ankles and knees and uh, legs. So I like to draw out my front foot area on the deck of the surfboard and I actually draw out a little section that's right above my foot pad on the tail of the surfboard as well as sometimes my back foot might need to adjust depending on the wave and depending on the situation. And I tend to put a little bit extra wax in a section that's actually beyond where my front foot might rest in most cases and put it up in the area where the deck starts to transform into the nose of the board. This sometimes gives you a little extra insurance for your stance. It's also good for doing aerials. As many aerialists tend to go with a wide stance. The last tip to consider would be to add a thin strip of wax on the rails along the nose of your surfboard as it helps with duck diving and getting a better grip. 
Generally speaking, the best application technique for applying wax to your surfboard would be to rub the wax in a circular motion. In some sections, you may end up using a back and forth motion as well, but for the most part, go with the circular motions. And you keep up this process until you come up with a bunch of little wax mounds across your board that actually raise up from a solid area of wax. And after your initial waxing, it's a good idea to apply additional wax and comb your surfboard prior to each surfing session. And based on the frequency of your surfing, it's probably good to change your wax out every two to four weeks. Uh, wax can last longer. There are some people out there that boast about uh, how many years they've had the same wax on their surfboard. So it really does vary, but uh, probably for the best stickiness with the least amount of weight added to your surfboard, uh, it's going to be uh, something that you should do you know, once a month, once every other month at the latest. So, One of the options that's not featured in this video would be the use of Chief Firewater, uh, which is a wax remover. And Chief Firewater is something that you would do after scraping all the wax off. You would apply Chief Firewater, use a paper towel to then wipe down your board and remove any residue from your previous waxing. A lot of times that step is added when somebody wants to get a complete replacement of wax or if you're removing and adding a new traction pad, or if you're adding any stickers to your surfboard, it's a good idea to go ahead and clean the area off completely prior to doing that. That way your sticker will stay on there. And you have to keep in mind that surfing is a dangerous sport. Uh, you pretty much surf at your own risk. So everything in this video are just some suggestions and tips. Uh, ultimately, you're gonna have to figure out what works best for you and uh, go with what's gonna allow you to be the safest and perform the best.